I had worked in an emergency room inside a hospital for four years. I was very surprised that there's nothing that's going to allow them to bond materials and tissues together. So up on the screen here, you can actually see the method that they're using every day today to suture blood vessels. It hasn't changed in over 100 years. Every one of those blood vessels they have to repair takes about 20 minutes of suturing. It can cause unnecessary damage and a lot of pain. I had this idea to make a new type of chemical glue. It could theoretically be activated and deactivated with light or voltage or even magnetic fields, and it'll create these tiny little micro hooks, almost like Velcro, that allow you to cross-link almost any type of surface. We knew that it had a big chance of failing. I had many discussions with my mentor, Subu. He liked my ideas, and he gave me a lot of encouragement and said there needed to be some kind of breakthrough there. And so we went for this initial grant funding something like $50,000. The first application will be an implantable medical device. I thought I'd given a perfect presentation. This is unproven technology. You don't have enough data. We don't think it's going to work. How are we supposed to be confident that you're going to be able to do it? We got turned down, so I was like, what do we do next? And then we submitted for a million dollar grant. Did you continue believing in yourself the whole time? <laughs> no, we always had doubts. <laughs> $50,000 one failed. What's the chances with the million dollar one? And I remember just literally jumping out of my chair. We got that million dollar grant. <laughs> when we got this initial funding, we had to decide which type of materials we're going to use, natural or synthetic materials. Natural compounds have a better reputation in terms of biomedical devices and biomaterials. We naturally went with these. The first few experiments, they went great. But then the next week, they'd be completely different results, and we didn't understand why. Day in, day out, it wasn't working. For two years, I watched as the data sets came in and said that even though it's not working, we need to keep going down this direction. What's the definition of insanity, Terry? <laughs> when you keep repeating something and expecting different results, right? <laughs> If you're not meeting your objectives, they can take the money away. If it failed, then you don't get tenure. My career in academia would be done. When he came up for promotion, as the chair of the department, it was my unpleasant duty to inform him that he did not get through his tenure process. When his promotion was denied, Terry considered giving up this as a career, but that would have been a great loss to the academic world. You have the doubts from the, the grant reviewers, you have the doubts from the, the colleagues, and then the students themselves, they're having their own doubts. Should we keep believing and, and, and doing what the professor says? So we spent hours discussing this. I was able to convince him that his work was worth pursuing. I had a conversation with my graduate student he had found out that the polymers would just randomly fall apart. One of the assumptions I made in terms of natural materials was wrong. So we moved to synthetic polymers. From the very first test, everything that we envisioned it to do, how fast it could react, how safe it could be, it was all working now. I was walking on air. For like a week, I was walking on air. <laughs> Now we're in animal trials. There was no toxicity to the tissues. We're putting together blood vessels. We're using it for drug delivery. The nurses are planning different studies with it. First in human trials within three to five years. We never had a problem with funding again. His second attempt was enough to get him tenure. And now it's recognized as a wonderful contribution to bioadhesives. A lot of people are emailing us now, can we make sandpaper with it? Can we use it to glue together different automobile parts? We're not moving into automotive. Automotive called us. I would say, of course, I had my self-doubt. But I also knew that in order to go to somewhere new, we have to be confident enough that if you really think this is a good idea and you've prepared yourself enough, then you know that this is the right way to go.